Hello, welcome. Welcome to Lightspeed's webinar on the Gemba Walk. I'm Audrey and I'll be monitoring your questions on the sidebar. For live attendees that are joining us right now, you'll receive an email after this with the recording, um, a link to the slide deck and information on claiming your PDUs and SEUs after we finish. As we wait for a few more people to join, can you tell me where you're from in the chat box so I know that we successfully started the webinar here? Thank you, Eric. Eric, you're the only one here today. It's Houston. Just kidding. There we go. Marilyn, Des Moines, they're coming in. Bob, they can hear us. That's great news. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, Bob Payne is presenting on the power of the Gemba Walk today. A little about Bob. He's the SVP of Agile Transformation and Coaching here at Lifespeed. He was an early adopter of extreme programming, Scrum, SAFE, and has worked exclusively as a Lean Agile Transformation Leader since 1999. Bob, you host the Agile Toolkit podcast, and you've produced over 170, probably around 200 podcasts now, yeah. recording with a variety of industry leaders and Agile practitioners. And everyone who just joined, people are still rolling in. You will receive an email with a link to the recording, slide deck, and info on PDUs and SEUs after we finish today. So welcome, everybody, and hi, Bob. Hello. Um, so yeah, a little little bit about me. Uh, I've been uh, doing Lean and Agile for, um, for almost 20 years now. Um, started in 99, so I need to update this slide. Uh, again, uh, I do host the Agile Toolkit podcast, and I'll be releasing a uh, few uh, new episodes in the in the near future from the Business Agility Conference held in New York, and I'm also the chair of the Agile DC Conference. If you're um, if you're local, uh, you can come to the a great one day um, event, uh, the Agile DC Conference, and, and we also have a number of conferences uh, that Lightspeed holds. Um, outside of the Agile DC, that's a community conference, but we also have the Lean Plus Agile DC uh, conference coming up. And what's the date on that, uh, Audrey? May 15th. May 15th. Excellent. Um, and uh, then we have our executive uh, seminar uh, as well, and that's that's uh, later in the year. So, uh, so welcome everybody. Um, I'll be happy to take questions. Audrey's going to uh, be monitoring the chat. Uh, and relay questions to me. Um, so if you have any questions, just type them in. Um, I will try to stop at the end of every major section um, and happy to answer questions. Want to make this as interactive as it can be, given the sort of one-way nature of of the webinar. Uh, you know, uh, type in your questions, and I'll try to take as many as I can. Excellent. So uh, again, um, we're from Lightspeed. If you you've obviously heard of us in some way because you're you're on the webinar, um, uh, we were excited to be recognized a couple of times this year. Uh, one by um, uh, CIO Magazine. Uh, we were recognized as one of the ten most promising agile consulting services and companies. So that was uh, that was a great. Um, and unexpected. Uh, it was a major award. Uh, so <laughs> if anybody has ever seen a Christmas story, uh, it's not quite as elegant as a leg lamp, but it, it, uh, we're happy to, to have received it. Okay, so um, I'm going to start to lay out a uh, couple of problems that we see, and, and we're going to talk about the Gemba Walk, and I'll, I'll define that in just a moment. But one of the problems we quite often see is we have Agile sort of in this um, design, develop, integrate, that DDI, that iterative section. But quite often we've got leadership um, uh, and long-term plan, short-term plan, build plan, initiation, um, scoping. All of this seems to be happening in silos. And one of the one of the things that we see many organizations doing is starting to move towards end-to-end -to -end value stream teams, 
um, and also trying to get very close leadership uh, alignment and connectivity of um, strategy with execution. Um, and one of the critical ways of doing this uh, developed uh, Toyota production system is this idea of the Gemba walk. And we'll, we'll, we'll touch that uh, in, in a moment. But one of the co-founders of the lean movement, uh, W. Edwards Deming, um, said your system is perfectly designed to get the results you're getting. So if leadership and execution don't have great alignment, if there's not much visibility as to what's happening in execution from the people making plans, uh, if you're t it takes a long time to deliver systems, if quality is bad, then your system is perfectly designed to get the results you're getting. And when Deming talked about the system, he was really talking about the processes, practices, organizational structures, governance structures, um, those uh, parts of what they called the system, not to be confused with the um, system that we're trying to develop in IT, but the system of how we organize people, uh, how we organize, plan, and execute with processes, tools, and, um, and the interactions of those individuals doing it. So as we go through this, I, I'd like you to sort of think about how, what is the system for your leadership, your managers, to interact with the people that are actually delivering value in your teams. Um, again, this idea of the Gemba Walk comes from Lean. Uh, it's called the system that changed the world. Um, in, a, in a Lean organization, value is always uh, number one, getting value to flow through the system, continuous improvement, and a connection between people and leadership, the people delivering value and the people managing and organizing uh, the, um, the system or the company or the department, whatever we, uh, level of organizational um, scope we're, we're looking at. So this leadership can be at all levels. Um, and one of the things that we've been seeing in this idea of business agility um, is a number of uh, different strategies, and we, we call these our business agility sparks, for allowing rapid delivery. And, and part of that is dynamic strategy and decision-making, uh, value management um, office, uh, understanding how to connect uh, strategy, funding, leadership with the execution in a, uh, in a, in a system that allows for very rapid uh, and agile delivery of value. Um, so one of the things that we're, we're, we're seeing is this adoption of an end-to-end -end value stream team where we have, uh, we sort of bust across um, many silos. So we have business people working directly with uh, usability and architecture and delivery and operations. You might even include sales, uh, marketing, and these value stream teams. Um, and we need some way of um, having leadership understand what's going on in these value streams, uh, being able to link uh, and create dynamic strategy uh, so that you can take advantage of rapidly changing business conditions. Um, and again, one of the ways that we'll talk about that and think about that is this idea of a Gemba walk or having leaders closely engaged with delivery so that uh, we're always executing on the most important thing first. So I mentioned Edward Deming. He was one of the creators of Toyota Production System, along with Taichi Ano. Um, and uh, they have lots of quotable quotes, and we'll get a few of those in this presentation. Um, and one of them is, don't look with your eyes, look with your feet. Don't think with your head, think with your hands. So this was all about the idea that leaders go to the place of work, they they understand how to do the job, they pitch in to help, and they engage 
workers, not with the workers reporting up to them, but them going to the place of work to understand how the work was delivered and to help integrate strategy and have everyone understand what the direction of the organization was. Um, so this idea of walking the line, uh, get uh, a nice Johnny Cash reference here. Um, this idea of the Gemba um, is the actual place or the place of where work is delivered. So a Gemba walk is about leaders, managers, um, going to uh, walk that entire value stream. So if we're talking about a, a an automotive plant, like a Toyota plant, you're actually going to the line, you're going to where parts are stamped. Um, and Taichi Ono had this, um, this technique called the Ono Circle. And what he would do is when he, he would get new managers in the company, he would draw a circle um, and say, stand in that circle and then uh, tell me when you see improvements. And, and they would, you know, inevitably a manager would come up and have two or three improvements and you'd always say, um, I, I need more. And eventually people would realize that they would, if they were interacting directly with the people delivering the work uh, from that circle, seeing what was going on, that they could actually come up with better improvements and better engage with the work that was being delivered. So this idea of a Gemba walk is the leader goes to the place of work, the team room in IT or the, or the manufacturing line in, in a production system or the logistics and shipping if you're in a warehousing um, situation. You engage with the work, you ask questions, you help out. This is not the boss walk. Uh, this is the walk where leaders go and rather than telling people what to do, observe, engage, help, um, and uh, collaborate with the people delivering the work. And this was, this was such an important um, piece of the Toyota production system uh, that it, was, it, it, it is part of that month-long uh, learning uh, when people go to uh, Toyota. They, they take a, a month out of their schedule um, to learn the uh, many of the different Toyota production system, quality engineering, Gemba Walk, uh, and many of the other lean concepts that are have been embedded in the Toyota production system. So that month is not dedicated to learning how to do your work. Um, that that month is dedicated to all of these different techniques, where Gemba is one of them for anyone who oversees anybody else in Toyota. So we're gonna talk a little bit um, about um, this idea of a Gembo walk. And here um, in, in this, um, this section, uh, all of these little teams at the bottom, you'll see I'm dropping some arrows, these little teams, uh, these are all individual scrum teams, um, for example. And they would have a scrum, and then um, when they have a scrum of scrums, they report up to uh, a cross-team cross reporting system, and then eventually a scrum of scrum of scrums, and maybe the executive action team, or uh, it, it, they're sometimes uh, called. Um, and um, those, Report ups are for information flowing down, but in a Gemba walk or lean situation, leaders from that executive management team would also be expected to um, to be in uh, to be able to walk into those team rooms at any time to uh, figure out uh, and to engage with the people in those team rooms. Now. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how that might work. Um, and I'll give some examples from, uh, from some of our clients. But in, in a lean organization, it is expected that 
a leader should be able to walk into any team room and ask any member of the team what they're working on, what their quality metrics are, um, how their work rolls into organizational strategy. So this idea of delegating information down so that the people doing the work can make more informed decisions about uh, their day-to-day -day job and understand how their work ties in with organizational value delivery in the same way that anybody on the Toyota line, um, I visited the Georgetown, Kentucky plant, uh, anybody there can tell you exactly how many cars they're building that day, how far along they are, and how long it's taken to build each car because uh, those visual management systems um, are up all over the plant and everybody knows exactly how many vehicles they're building. If there are any um, quality problems, uh, those are indicated by value management, but the workers doing the work understand and have the information that they need um, to, to, uh, to determine how their Value creation ties into organizational strategy. Now, they may not have the full picture of organizational strategy, but they'll certainly know how their work uh, ties in. So, um, Audrey, are there any questions on the line for folks that? Sure are. So, Bob, okay. this one came up a while back, kind of right when you started. What is a good way to measure value from a metrics point of view? Mm. That's a great question. Um, and I, I wish I had a pat, pat answer, um, but I can tell you one of the things that we, we do often when we go into an organization, it's the first thing that we do with um, leadership, uh, and it's usually a joint planning session with leadership management and, and teams that are executing, is have that conversation about what value is. And it's gonna be, considerably different from organization to organization. And, and I say that because if you look at, uh, for example, an organization like Citizenship and Immigration Services, or USCIS, one of the organizations that I worked with, they have an agency mission uh, that is their primary value. So for them, um, some of the things that they looked at was customer satisfaction for both internal and external users of their IT systems. Uh, it improved time to value or time to, um, uh, to uh, knowing if I applied for a student visa, my time to value is I put in an application for a student visa, did I get approved or, or do I need more information uh, or did I get denied? that. So improved turnaround time for those decisions and improved information for the adjudicators to do their work. Now, that's going to be a completely different value model than, um, than a company, than like a commercial company. And even with a, within a commercial company, you might have one area, let's say your digital team, whose primary contribution to value is, is um, maybe increased brand awareness, whereas another, um, another part of the organization might be direct revenue generation. Another part of the organization might be cost savings. So, um, so what, I, what I have people do is come up with an economic model. Is it customer retention? Is it value generation? Is it cost reduction? Is it risk reduction or mitigation? Um, and, and, it, and it could be any number of those things in, in some combination, but it is important to have that conversation. I see many people um, measuring uh, things like velocity and, and internal compliance uh, in the agile world, but not many people measuring value. So um, but the good news is there are a lot of uh, um, tools, techniques, and DevOps that allow you to to measure those things uh, all the way from revenue to um, organic, you know, um, referrals uh, from people on social media. Um, so you've just got to figure out what metrics make sense. Um, 
uh, within your organization. Sounds good. Do you want to take one more? Yeah. So Anne wants to know, how is this different from Deming's TQM? It seems to be very much aligned to what's being discussed. Yeah, um, it, it, it certainly is. Um, uh, it, it really TQM uh, came out of the lean movement um, and the Gemba Walk came out of the lean movement. So there is, there's a ton of, uh, there's a ton of overlap there. Most people don't apply it uh, in software leadership. I think that's where the biggest rub has been. Okay. All right, and then a couple of comments, questions on this specific slide and graphics. So maybe Wait. we'll take one more and then keep moving. Sure. Um, one question or comment, if there are that many scrum of scrums, there will be overhead in collaboration and time spent. I think that's a absolutely. comment what you're showing there. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, there absolutely will. But if you're trying to coordinate work across uh, thousands of people, um, so for example, uh, this, is, this is roughly a scrum at scale model. Um, uh, there, there certainly is overhead. Um, but for example, Saab uses a four tiered uh, scrum of scrums um, to, to coordinate across several thousand uh, engineers uh, in, in their Saab Gripen program that's building the, the Saab Gripen. Whenever you start to scale to large systems, uh, you're going to have overhead. Now, that being said, you could have uh, much smaller um, systems and still this idea of a Gemba walk, even if you have five teams you're working with, you know, rather than getting a status report from the team, leaders go to the room, uh, sit with the team and gather metrics uh, rather than get reported out. So, yeah, I, I agree. This would be a, a ton of overhead. Okay, and then one more. When you don't have the Scrum at Scrum or this structure to carry out or report up to you, how do you manage without these resources? Are there other ways? Sure. So um, there, there. Um, you you may have a traditional reporting structure. I mean, oddly enough, those tend to look like uh, trees with leaves rather than um, a Scrum of Scrums. Uh, you might, in fact, just have uh, managers, leaders go to the the uh, go to the place of work to gather those metrics, or have open visible visible uh, visual management systems, visible uh, information radiators around the organization um, as a as a means of of getting information. And um, Regardless, I think the Gemba Walk is a great way for leaders to engage with uh, the people that are doing the work and delivering value. All right, great, let's roll. Okay, so um, again, another uh, Taichi Ono uh, talking about have to wash their hands at least three times a day. And that that's something that we, uh, you know, that we we have traditionally gotten away from in IT, the people managing the work, managing the people, um, don't actually uh, engage directly with that work, and that's part what a, an important part of the Gamba. Now I'm going to talk about visual management systems as well, because those are an important part of uh, they 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 sort of work together. Um, to to allow people to know what strategy is uh, and how their work aligns. So the workers need access to the information. So here's just a, a cockpit which has a ton of um, visual management systems. Um, so at the delivery team level, um, you know, delivery team should establish visual management. Um, they may want to measure quality, uh, impediments, or continuous improvement items that they're um, working on. You don't, it, or if they have direct value metrics, we would we would want to uh, have some uh, visual management system for that, some way that everybody knows where that uh, metric is. And any metric that flows up or gets 
reported up, and I, I use I you couldn't see me there because I was doing air quotes around it, because we don't really want it necessarily to be reported up. But anything that that does flow up or information that, that goes outside of the room that is whoops, sorry, that is meant to affect the behavior of the team or align their work to the upstream value. Um, that is maintained by the teams. The teams do those measurements uh, and understand those. Um, it, I worked in a hotel industry organization, um, and one of the key metrics was, you know, uh, essentially micro conversion. Did we get people through a sales funnel and get, you know, they sort of called it heads and beds. Um, and the team that was the teams that were responsible for that sales funnel all knew what the their micro conversion or and total conversion metrics were and they maintained those uh, in their team rooms and then uh, if you have a value management office program management office um, uh, leadership of, of some sort that that want that information generally uh, that is uh, if not all the time uh, that that can be a periodic gamba walk to the place of work to where the delivery teams are maintaining that um, that information um, and also the representatives from the delivery team may do gamba walks to the leaderboards this is a two-way um, transfer of, of information uh, and two-way understanding of the jobs that are done at the different organizational levels. And we'll talk a little bit about those as well. So this is uh, one organization we were in. Uh, this is back in 2012. Uh, you can see that they have uh, metrics that are being reported up. They have their red, amber, green uh, indicators or RAG indicators um, uh, over in the upper left-hand corner. Um, they have their, uh, it was iteration 21 for them. There are those three continuous improvement items that they're um, they're working on and they had some other quality metrics uh, throughput metrics uh, that they maintained visually in the room now what you'll see as we get further on uh, we're actually going to see uh, how that got reported up to um, to the higher levels um, here's just a regular um, visual management system for the team, uh, just cards on a wall, um, uh, you know, tracking the work from sort of discovery to in process to, to done. At any time, a leader could walk into this room, see who's working on what. Uh, in th these cases, the colors represented a line of business that that team was doing work for, um, and they could get a lot of information. This idea that, um, uh, that Jeff Sutherland and Ken Schwaber had about Scrum was if they just track the work on the wall, then the team is self-reporting, but it requires that leaders go to, um, to uh, that place of work to get information. Now, you'll, you'll see outside of the current iteration, they had sort of a rolling wave plan. Here was, you know, the next iteration after that, and then, and there are a couple of different models for this in, in a couple of different teams. Um, but the product owners for these teams would quite often bring their stakeholders, their leaders in uh, to show into this room rather than generating a report. They would bring them in and walk the wall, walk the line of value delivery uh, and talk about what they were delivering over the next month or the next release or the next quarter uh, to align everybody with uh, what was being delivered. And at that point, um, you know, the leaders can ask questions of the teams and, and, and sort of see the work as it's being done rather than just getting reports up. Um, so here's a, a particular Gemba walk. I uh, can't see it very well, but there's a sort of a, there's a woman um, right in the center of that picture. She was uh, she was a, a delivery leader in that organization, and she was just simply going into the room uh, to you know talk about strategy, 
to uh, ask people about the metrics. And it was expected that she could grab anybody, a tester, um, business analyst, product owner, scrum master, uh, and they would be able to explain their current metrics and how the work they were, they were doing tied up to the overall value that that team was delivering. Um, and it was not only expected, it was executed. The leaders in, this was actually at Nationwide, were required to, um, uh, they had a sort of a required cadence for how often they needed to go on a Gemba walk to interact with the teams that they were quote unquote managing. Um, questions about the, the team level before I move on to sort of the portfolio level. Not just yet. We'll see if anyone's typing in. Okay. Prompted. And so, yep. meanwhile, I did forget to mention, Bob, that there's a handout in the handout section that captures all of these bullets in case anyone is furiously taking notes. Yeah. So there's a there's yep there's a a little uh, checklist for uh, for gimbal walks in the in that guide. All right. No questions at the team level. Let's go. Okay. Great. So this idea of a um, VMO value management organization or portfolio management working portfolio, this is a um, the 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 leadership overseeing the delivery of multiple teams, multiple agile teams. So um, and as as you know, because they're coordinating across multiple teams, they're probably managing dependencies. They may be managing financial information, but the flow of work through those teams. And they're also resolving impediments uh, for those teams. And so the VMO, the PMO, should be engaging with working sessions, going on Gemba walks uh, with uh, both the delivery teams and the leadership teams. And by shifting to working sessions, um, status becomes secondary. The work is the primary thing that we're concerned with, and status is secondary. Status should be self-reporting and available to anyone at any time. If they need status, they can walk to a wall or pull up the electronic uh, board if the teams are using electronic um, visual management systems and, and get the status as it is currently. Um, so uh, quite often these VMOs, PMOs are going to track things across multiple teams. They're focused at con uh, continuous improvement at their level. Uh, and again, they're going on Gemba walks to team spaces and working sessions, also Gemba walks to leaderboards and working sessions. So uh, here is an example. Uh, at the top, you see all of these pictures, all of these teams. Um, and this was a value management office that had sort of tactical initiatives and strategic initiatives. Now, you can see that these are probably a little more granular than um, a project, but they're akin to a project. They're a bundling of work that has some value, either long-term strategic value or, or some tactical value. And they did have some analysis and discovery that needed to happen before it dropped over into the teams on these things. Now, each card, represents a bundle of value. And that would be akin to like an epic and a scaled agile framework um, or a, you know, a, a chunk of a project uh, in a traditional project management. And they're just tracking it across uh, until it drops into a particular team. And then they track the total time to value um, from when they the idea hit this board to when it was delivered in production so that they can smooth the flow of value through this lean system. Um, here's another board. We talked about this uh, portfolio management team, the management accountability board. So teams um, would, uh, there would be projects that these leaders were working on. Teams would raise impediments. Um, they would have, you know, uh, tactical work, strategic work. Uh, and direct delivery work. Um, and the PMO, the, this leadership team, would have a daily stand-up around this board, who's working on what, for what team is it, um, and occasionally teams, if they had an impediment on this board, uh, would send someone on a Gemba walk to 
go to this daily stand-up, this, this kind of scrum of scrums uh, um, model uh, that happened at this DMO level. And they would also potentially send uh, team members from any of those teams to this wall when there was a stand-up happening or a working session happening around that wall. So this idea of Gemba walks and visual managements are very closely linked. Um, this is another, um, I coined the term portfolio alignment wall. Uh, this is tracking um, dependencies across six agile teams and five waterfall teams. And the sort of fluorescent green cards are features that are going to be complete and releasable. Um, every other card on the board is a dependency, um, data or, um, or an API or some technical uh, dependency or person dependency between teams. Um, and there again, this was a stand-up. Teams would send, it was sort of a scrum of scrums working session, would send a product owner, sometimes a tech person, scrum master, if they were from a waterfall team, the, pro, the uh, project manager would come uh, and have a working session in front of this board. I often say that uh, I made this wall because I was in the integrated master schedule meeting from hell, where it was just status, uh, line 295, you know, 75% done, no impediments. And all the working sessions happened out of sight, out of mind. So you'd never know how these things were being resolved. And there was very little visibility from team to team as to what the entire system was doing. So we changed that from a status meeting to a working session where people um, congregated around this working session, this place of work, to better understand how to deliver all of these dependencies. And if you think about it, this goes along with this idea of individuals and interaction over processes and tools. Now, yes, the portfolio alignment wall is a process. It is a tool, but it is there to drive the in interactions of the folks delivering value in the organization. Um, here's another um, portfolio level report. Uh, and if you remember those red, amber, green indicators, um, uh, on the team wall, this is a roll up. Uh, this is each, uh, you know, uh, this is a given team. I can see the, uh, I believe it's the Avengers team, uh, right, I'll put an arrow there, right there. Uh, they've got uh, a green, a yellow, a green, and a red. And that's a roll up from the team wall and I'll go back there quickly so you can see that. Um, see, they have those three indicators and one of them was, was um, skills, uh, which is not something the teams would, would um, keep in their room. Uh, that was for the, the Scrum Master product owner to put that red, amber, green indicator there. But that this is a roll up of the thing that was maintained in the teamwork room. Um, so any metric that is there to, to uh, be recording is maintained by the people doing the work and then rolled up. Questions before I go on to leadership teams. Bob, there are many companies or many companies have their own tools to track agile deliverables on a sprint basis. So yep. how can Gemba be effectively used in updating both the physical boards as well as tools? Yeah, so um, generally within the team room, they'll have they'll probably be using possibly Jira or Agile Craft or version one to manage the sprint. And that, that would be their visual management system. They may also have um, either a physical board or maybe a Confluence wiki or a SharePoint site that lists current impediments and maybe team schedule or something else. But there's, there's a place there. Um, but rather than just pulling those up, um, you know, go to the 
stand up occasionally, um, ask about those metrics, ask to see what's on the board, look at the release plan um, that, that is there. And rather than just consuming the status, um, leaders, portfolio managers, um, engage more directly with the people doing the work to get that status rather than just looking at the numbers. Because sometimes the status out of context um, you know, is a little hard to understand. So, so engaging more closely with the work. Thanks, that's it for now. Okay, great. So, and then we're talking about uh, leadership teams. Um, so, uh, and here we're, we're talking all, all levels of leadership, usually above the portfolio, um, you know, so multiple portfolios. Um, so leaders are going to do Gemba walks and working sessions with the portfolios, leads and managers. They may do um, maybe less frequently, but they're going to do Gemba walk uh, to the teams to engage, learn, and hopefully assist, right? If they can get their hands dirty, that's great. Now, they may not be assisting by coding, but they may be assisting by removing impediments, asking if there's anything that needs to be changed um, to him allow them to do their work better. This idea of lean improvement um, happens at all levels. And they'll quite often open up their working sessions uh, so that others in the organization can engage uh, with them at their working sessions as well. And uh, engage in alignment, that aligning strategy with execution and problem solving for all levels is, a, is an extraordinarily important. Um, thing that leaders need to be able to do. Um, for example, here's a continuous learning uh, board uh, that had uh, curriculum. This organization said, you know, it is everybody's responsibility to get better. And rather than saying, hey, you do it on your time with brown bags, they dedicated, you know, a Thursday afternoon a month to learning sessions, leaders, went to learning sessions. Um, and if anybody was interested in what that planning was for the continuous learning, they can come to this board. They can come to the planning meeting that happened around this board. They can go to the Gemba. Um, this is um, visual management at Nationwide. This is a CIO's board. So um, we saw those red, amber, green indicators at the team level. Um, they have been rolled up. This is not for a team, but that is actually for one, two, three, four, five teams that, that one of these um, people that reports up to this particular CIO um, uh, is managing. Um, they also have this account, leadership accountability board. This is the CIO's direct reports, and these are the, the initiatives they're working on. I can't tell what the color coding is, but it, it's probably related to strategic, ta tactical, maybe impediments. Um, they have, you know, um, some quad analysis going on here. I'm not sure what uh, that was. They have continuous improvement um, items uh, listed, um, like these A3 items. There may be, uh, these are other metrics. I'm not sure what these subsections are. But twice a week, the CIO has an open stand-up with his leadership team and team members, eight, or anybody from anybody, any of the teams below them are allowed to show up at this stand-up and go to the leader's Gemba. This is where the work occurs, where, where strategic decisions are made and then linked down through this series of scrum of scrums or or tiered planning and engagement sessions all the way down to execution teams um there we go I, for some reason i've lost my cursor there we go now i have it back um so in this way, they're they're doing something similar to the um, to this Scrum at scale model, 
where they have teams, they have a, a leader with the scrum of scrums, scrum of scrum of scrums, and then all the way up to the executive action team um, uh, working. And each of those arrows, it's not a flow down, it's not a top down system. It's a bottom up, top down integration um, of effort, uh, strategy and assistance flowing down, uh, value and impediments uh, flowing up from the teams executing on delivery. The sort of the definition of a leader is someone who doesn't directly deliver value in most lean systems. They're the people working with the people that deliver direct value. Um, Here's an A3, uh, and the, the, those of you famil familiar with um, Lean and Toyota, um, they have an A3 process, which is essentially their continuous improvement. Uh, so this was uh, a way that continuous improvement was done at a particular organization across multiple teams, multiple experiments, um, uh, happening to try to improve uh, different parts of their IT delivery system. Um, and uh, this sort of uh, idea of strategic planning and working sessions, uh, you know, can even be applied to something as big as the merger of Delta and Northwest. I had a gentleman in, in my class that said, oh, I was an aviation consultant um, back in the day, and I actually worked on that board. Um, and uh, he said it was a constant working session with, you know, people delivering on on some of these, uh, you know, any given sticky might be thousands of hours worth of work, um, you know, or hundreds of hours worth of work. They were essentially projects in and of themselves, but they were trying to lay out how do we deal with all of these systems that need to be changed and uh, and create a working session, a place where the where value is tracked, that people can go to that place and have those go to the Gemba and um, have a planning session here at the overall plan, but then also drop down into uh, the teams uh, leaders dropping in to say, hey, uh, you know, I've got. Uh, I've got one of these blue loyalty program stickers on my board. Um, it looks like it's delayed. You know, uh, how can I help? Um, now, I uh, do want to answer, have uh, time to answer some questions, but what I'd love you to do, and I've got some homework for you after this webinar if you're keenly interested. So select an issue um, or improvement um, that you're having either how, how we report up or, you know, how do we escalate impediments, um, but something where you think you could get some improvement in your delivery of value may require that you sit down and, and talk about what value is um, so that you can do that. And then brainstorm how you might use this idea of a gamble walk and or, and or a visual management system to engage people uh, from different parts of the organization and understanding and improving the value, um, the flow of value or the flow of information. And I'd also like, as you, if you decide to do this, what, how will you know uh, it has improved the system? So always go into these sorts of experiments with what do we expect to be better after we implement it uh, and, then, uh, and then run the experiment and see, did we actually get the improvement that we had hoped? to get. So that I will leave as your homework. And now I'd love to answer some questions for you. Super. So we have two questions that are pretty similar about, yeah. do you recommend anything in particular for Gemba walking with a remote team? Ah, um, uh, you, you're probably going to have some sort of, uh, it's going to be video uh, in, in all likelihood. Uh, it is always great if you can once a year, twice a year fly in to do the Gemba walk. Um, but uh, we had 
uh, one organization had many, many multiple agile teams, and they actually had rolling polycom carts so that they could pull a polycom cart up to any board or in any conference room. Uh, all they needed was Wi-Fi. All they needed was, uh, you know, uh, an outlet to plug it in, and they would essentially have two-way video uh, conferencing uh, at that at that spot. Um, and they had carts. They had two major locations, and they had these carts, uh, multiple carts per floor, um, uh, in, in both of those locations. So any team could go and just grab a cart, plug it in, and start a video call with the folks on the other end that were doing the Gemba. It was specifically for that, and also for just working meetings where they needed to connect people across those areas. The answer is always robots, Bob. The answer is robots. Uh, <laughs> All right, we've got one more here. What if middle managers are the impediment? <laughs> um, uh, we, you know, it, quite often um, a change to a, a real lean organization requires buy-in um, from leadership and middle management. I'm not going to name the name uh, of the company, uh, but in one of the transformations we were in, um, we had leadership buy-in, we had team buy-in, and leadership said, we're making this change, no associate, no person at the worker bee level will lose their job uh, during this transition, um, but management, um, the managers will either be behind this change or will uh, be finding another job. So they took a very strong stance that this change was important, um, that the, the middle management organizational structure was going to become more transparent, interactive, and they put their weight behind it. Now, you may not have the leadership that's going to take that very strong step. Um, and you might have to uh, incrementally introduce this. Um, so one strategy I have seen is, um, is just simply inviting those middle managers into the room uh, for uh, that status delivery, sort of a, rather than them taking the initiative to come to the space and, and share strategy and share the, that information, get invited into the, the team space and have the team share uh, those status items or the metrics that are gonna be rolled up in that weekly report. Just try to make it, turn it into more of a working session uh, and you may have to um, invite them and some of them may engage and uh, change their behavior to become more interactive and less directive, um, or they may not. And unfortunately, there's no magic um, for getting people to change their uh, behavior. But um, quite often you will need to uh, change the incentive system that they're working in, in the same way that the leaders of that other organization said, uh, this change will happen and, and middle management, you will pull behind uh, that change. So quite often figure out what pain they're having and figure out how your team can uh, help them. You know, that is always a good way and how that metric can be generated from the team and, and bring them, try to invite them in and, and you know, uh, make that change uh, a little more iteratively and organically. Some people find that their organizations won't change. Uh, and in those situations, I have seen people uh, who want to work in an organization that is more transparent, uh, collaborative across all levels. Uh, if they can't get their organization to change, then they will move to a different organization that does operate a little bit. Uh, more that way. And increasingly, organizations are realizing that if they want to attract and retain 
great talent, um, you know, people, uh, especially knowledge workers, want to work differently. Um, so. All right, thanks, Bob. We're gonna wrap it up and stop with that question. So if anyone thinks of another question, go ahead and send it in to Bob at info at lightspeed.com and we can get that answered. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Bob, for facilitating. And there's his contact information right there if yeah. you wanna reach out directly. Yeah, if you wanna reach out directly, my, uh, my email is bob.pain at lightspeed.com. And that 202 number is my direct cell number. So <laughs> you, awesome. And if you want to see Bob in person, the Lightspeed team, we're hosting our sixth annual Lean Plus Agile DC conference and job fair May 15th in Herndon, Virginia. If you're in the DC metro, we hope you can join us there. Um, you can register at leanagildc.com. And one free event coming up, we're hosting a free Agile government seminar on June 10th. That's also in Herndon, Virginia. And I okay. will be hosting that. As well. And Bob's the host of that. As, <laughs> great, Bob. You're doing a lot of hosting. Uh, yeah, and I'm and I'm the uh, co-chair of the of the the mainline Agile 2019 uh, Agile in Government track. Uh, so I was a co-chair of that this year. So I'm around, uh, and I'm relatively easy to get in hold of, and I'm happy to answer questions. So please reach out to me at any time. And thank you very much for taking your time out of your afternoon to uh, to join Audrey and I on this webinar. Yes, thanks everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you later. Or my wife will kill kill me. Audrey and me on this webinar. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. <laughs>